Well, good evening, Michelle. Um, uh, and this is a really sad day. And it's I feel uh, my heart goes out to his wife and his children. Uh, it must be absolutely devastating for them. I knew David really well as a friend. Uh, he's been a member of parliament for a long time. I've been a member of parliament for a long time. Uh, we shared lots of happy times together. Uh, I, I only recently, about a fortnight ago, I did a, a book launch with him of his book, uh, recalling some of the events he'd been involved with with the House of Commons. And we were joking um, over that interview. And uh, it just seems absolutely tragic that a man, as, as all of your contributors have said, was such a good uh, constituency member of parliament. And he, and he died helping people in his constituency. This is what's so terrible about it all. Um, so we really, we've really, we got a really sad loss today of somebody who was a giant as a constituency MP. Geoffrey, are we moving to a situation where it's going to be increasingly difficult for MPs, constituency MPs, to hold surgeries face-to-face -face where they act almost as de facto social workers and anybody who wants to come in to see them to press any problem upon them can do that in really a very intimate and open way? Well, good evening, Mark. I, I was asked that very question on an earlier uh, interview. I think if we get into a situation where uh, colleagues and members of parliament like myself can't freely interact with our constituents, whether it's walking up the high street or in a surgery or anywhere else without some sort of bodyguard or something like that, uh, I think democracy is going to be irre irrevocably changed. We've got to find a way where MPs can be confident of their safety, but at the same time, all constituents feel they have free access to their member of parliament because that's one of the real strengths of our democracy. When one of my constituents has a problem, whether when they're in trouble, one way or another, they can approach me. And that's a really, really important part uh, of what I do. So, Geoffrey, um, do you feel any less safe tonight doing your job? Well, I've, I've never not felt safe. And I have to say, I was very touched that my chief constable got in touch earlier in the day. He said, if you've got any worries whatsoever, please phone me. So that was a, 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 a very good gesture, I thought. Uh, of course, as a responsible person, I will always think carefully about my security, particularly on those events like surgeries, which are pre-advertised, so people know where I am at a particular time in advance. And I was uh, discussing that very point with my police earlier this afternoon. Yeah, and um, I mean, I have to confess, I didn't know Sir David at all, but um, in, in looking him up and reading so many tributes to him today, he seemed to be a man with a great sense of humour. Um, there was a great uh, image that he published himself in 2015 when he became knighted of, of himself dressed as a knight. Is that your experience of him as a man with a great sense of humour? Oh, absolutely. As I said, this book launch we did about a fortnight ago where I was interviewing him. I mean, the anecdotes and the, the laughter and the amusement that went on in that interview was just absolutely a typical of the man. He was a, a great friend to everybody and nothing was too much trouble for him to do for his constituents, as you already heard on the tributes uh, that I've heard on your, ra your, your, your radio this evening. So, yeah, a really sad loss. Yeah, I'm just showing my uh, viewers the picture there. It's a tremendous picture, and that was to celebrate his knighthood back in 2015.